Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lovely uh, sunny day here today, and I thought I'd make a little video for you. Um, wait for the car to go by. I've been asked to just go through what rods and brushes I use, so um, this is what I keep in the van. Um, it's not all the stuff I've got but it's the stuff I use most and if I have anything special to do I might have some gear in the house uh, that I'll take with me but 99.9% .9 of the time this is what I use so um, let's go through what I've got and why I've got it okay and we'll do the full back of the van shall we do that Sorry, I've got an itch. All right, okay. So this is built up over years and changing ways we sweep. Um, years ago, everything was manual. So I had well over 30 different brushes in the back of the van for different situations. Some used more than others. But today we do things with rotary um, and it suits nearly every job. So uh, I've got different brushes to suit each jimmy. So, okay, so we've got, let's start with the normal traditional looking brushes. Okay, so I've got various sizes of roll brushes. These are all um, IPS brushes. I do like these, they're a bit shorter than some others. And when you're getting around bends, the shorter the brush, the better. So I've got various sizes um, for different liners. Small one there, look, small one. And then next size up we've got. And then this one I think is maybe 10 inch, something like that. And that one's maybe 8, and that one's 6, and that might be 5 maybe and then I've got a as the brushes go up they obviously need to be a bit stiffer so I've got um, this RPS one one of their white stiff ones and the next size down I think that's maybe 14 inches and that one's 18 or something like that Uh, and I use so I use these softer ones in liners when it's light sort of deposits and gas fires, gas liners, oil liners. The stiffer ones I use in um, brick flues and clear lined flues. Okay, and then over here I've got I've got one by Rod Station. Um, it's a nice brush. I can't remember what size it is now, maybe 18, 20 inches, 18 I think, and then um, uh, I tend to use that less uh, because I find it uh, wants to, and if you're used to using rotary, it wants to drag the brush down the chimney, and sort of, and with, with these ones you know, it doesn't happen as much. So this one I tend to use in maybe the bigger flues, if I put this in the standard flue, brick flute it, uh, it's more difficult but it's a nice brush to use yeah it does the job and then I've got this really big one I can't remember how big this is now a couple of feet um, this is just for those big and it's a stiff it's quite a stiff bristle brush it's an RPS one no it's not it's a rod station one and um, I bought that to do a particular job I think I've only ever used it on one job rarely use it but I have got some flues that um, probably could do with that brushing it every now and then okay so that's your traditional looking uh, brushes <coughs> and then the next sort of brush we carry is whip heads <coughs> and whip heads don't last very long so I carry um, I've got a small one over there which is a tr this is a for the 8mm rods from RPS and this is good for uh, cookers and ranges and stuff that have got flue ways you need to get a brush in rarely use it and then I've got another 8mm <coughs> with bed and it's 2.5mm line I 
don't use that much as you can see it's like brand new still put it as its place is and then the ones I use the most this is a rod station bullet head sort of thing with stiff line in it <clears throat> um, I've restrung that I haven't used it yet I tend to let them all get a bit battered before I do them this is a RPS one it's the same sort of thing and this is the speed loader or whatever they call it with stiff line in it and I use a stiff line because you don't have to get the soot off especially if you've got wood burning with a bit of tarry stuff going on it in a liner of course or you can use these in clear liners if you've got the big enough strands and then um, another one there look you can see that's well, well battered I think you maybe get two or three jobs out of one of these before they need Restringing depends how big the flue is, and then uh, I tend to restring them quite quite long, so they last as long as possible. As you can see one there, look, it's got the strands on it, and they're a lot longer, and they wear down on the tips. There's another one, and then I've got these ones, which are the sort of I, think I cut these to about between 14 and 18 inches. These strands. And they use these in brick flues that are a bit more tarry maybe, need a bit more aggressiveness. Um, and they use, like you can use these in liners, you can use them in anything really. And it's a thinner line so it's not as aggressive. And there's one over there that is um, pretty well battered. As you can see that's been in all sorts this week. Um, and there's two more that I use. Yeah. You can see this one's all bent and twisted. This I use this I'll just leave it like that. I use this for abusing nests. Um, you know if you need something that's more aggressive you can and it's spinning these fling out so the the good on getting nests out of corners and stuff and they're not as aggressive as um, chain and, and cable. And there's a bigger one here which I do use again for nests, you know when you've got a bit of nest that don't want to come off a ledge uh, I use that and that just generally gets it off, one of these two will work and these are strung with the thick line again yeah and uh, you know I've no, I don't think I've ever restrung that one, I might have done no I don't think I have and this one gets uh, restrung every now and then when it gets really battered, okay. So that's pretty much all the usual things I use daily. And we've got something here, look. We've got, um, they end up like that, start like that, they end up like that, battered, but they're still effective when they're spinning around at fast speed. And I use these for breaking up nests. These ones, that one, and that one. Uh, I do have a shorter one with shorter cable on it, but the foot's worn out and I ain't got any short cable left, so I need to order some. So they're just basically the same heads as uh, these, but uh, with cable in, and, and they're good for smashing up nests and stuff. Uh, and then we move on. Once we've got the nest smashed up and most of it down, we'll move on to one of these and maybe use one of them to get the rest out if we have to. And then this thing, I use this on for scrubbing clay liners that have got a bit of tar in. I have used it in brick flues before, but gently. Um, not on high speed, but on clay liners you can use that. Scrubs the tar off, low or high speed, whichever you want. And I think this head's, yeah, this is a RPS head. Okay, and You've got to be careful using that because you can get it hooked because it's a loop, get it hooked on things, so let's go careful. So I think that's sort of if you're just sweeping liners, you just need um you know liners of bird guards, bending wood or smokeless maybe. You just need some whip heads. That'll probably get you by. Um, if you're doing a lot more brick flues, clay flues, gas, oil, you might need to get some softer brushes. 
um, or some of these things for brick flues. Um, yeah, so I think I, I don't really need much else on a day to day basis. This covers most of my things I find. Um, I do have some other brushes that I use. Um, this is for cleaning sort of the bottom of open fires. It's, sort of, it's pretty good, it's heavy. And it, you know, when you've got a, the, the brush doesn't quite fit, the bottom of the open fire is a bit big. You can use this, and it it's good. It's good for getting the soot out at the bottom, that that um, the gather area, if you want. Okay. Um, I think everybody does these now. This is an RPS one. <clears throat> now I've got various boiler brushes in different lengths and sizes. Um, here are some small ones, some scrapers. Got a short scraper there. Look. And they're all in a twisted wire loop. I got these from Tema, and, uh, and I've got another one somewhere in one of the bags, I think. Maybe, he says. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, just get a very selection there. They're not expensive, they last a long time. They're great for cookers and boilers and those weird cookers with the oven bit at the top. You know, a stove with the oven bit on the top, you know. Um, yeah, uh, I keep various lengths of cable and um, line in the van in case I need to restring any. Some more cable there. Look. Need to restring any any of the brushes, <coughs> but you, you tend not to. You tend to just do that in your normal sort of maintenance weekly weekend checks if you want. I'll put that back up there. Well, I just hook most of them on these sort of hooks. That does the job. Uh, I've got some of these which are made out of welding wire. And we used to use those when we used to hang manual brushes by the ball but we don't tend to there's a couple hung by the ball there, but um, we tend to hang them by the the fitting now on these things. <clears throat> so I've got various sorts of brushes. I've got uh, just lots of hand brushes. This is a dirty hand brush. This is for cleaning the filters and doing dirty jobs. There you go. Uh, this is a clean hand brush for cleaning um, things that are. I don't want to get dirty if you want and at some point these get migrated to the dirty pile because they get they get dirty in the end and then I've got a couple of new ones at the back now this is a soft one and the one, a couple at the back are hard ones um, the soft ones sort of wear well they all wear out don't they but I'll just keep a couple of spare another soft one I've got uh, keep some of these in the sweeping bags because these are good for uh, once you've swept open fire reaching in and just brushing off the shelf and that so I've maybe got three of these somewhere including that one <coughs> um, a nest hook there and a scraper that goes on your rod nest hook now this is for manual rods um, but I've got an adapter somewhere for the click on rods um, a set of those for measuring uh, how wide the flues are if I need to know something a retrieval tool which is this looks crap but it's actually really good and I've recovered all sorts of stuff with that it's good for getting stuck rods out if you're ever unlucky to lose one or someone you know going to a customer who swept it themselves and lost a brush or a rod get one of them and it'll fit eight mil rods as well as the, the bigger ones and then a cable Sorry, chain, chain one. Um, there's various chain ones on the market, but I find this is adequate for me. Dropping it, and we get it. Gotta be careful of this though, because um, on clear liners, they have a little gap between each liner, and you can jam a chain in them gaps, and then it can become stuck. 
I've done that. Um, it happens quite often. Um, there's a way of getting them out without making the problem worse. But it will remain, you know, remain calm. <laughs> so there's those. I'll keep those. There. Put them all back. Well, I'll just hook them on. I really need to organise my van a bit better. But I'm kind of in the middle of, you know, switching from manual stuff to rotary still, and I've still got the, the old manual sort of setup in my head. And I need to make it more suitable for rotary, storing rotary brushes, and organise it in a slightly better way because they're all over the place at the minute. Now keep a shovel. Shovel's handy. Uh, I always keep some buckets in the van. There's three there. Um, and then they always carry my stuff, magnets and sealing up sheets with a bucket into the house. Um, they don't last long, they get abused, so you can be forever buying buckets. Um, yeah, what else we got? And we've got various sponges for blocking up open fires, big one at the back, yeah. And then these ones open fire, and this one's sort of park grey size. These ones sub doors, you know, the square ones, nine inch ones. This one they use for some stoves, park grays too. And then there's some more down there, Hoover over there. Because um, you, you need a bottom one, and the, you know, the, the big square one. So that's the big square one at the back, and that's the bottom one that goes underneath. Okay, let me vacuum. And there's some round sponges there. I don't know if you can see those. Those are good for when you're sweeping through a soot door outside and the flue pipe is in the soot door. You can block up the flue pipe with a sponge, stop the soot falling into the stove in the house. Some lubricants for doors, you know, um, a bit of steel. That's for making up, you know, when you, the blanking plates fall off the back of the stove. Well, you always keep a bit of steel in, and then we can make a bracket to get a blanking plate back on. So the customer's not, you know, got a stove that they can't use. Um, so rods, I tend to... I use the 12 mils every day. From... Rod station. There's some um, 12 mil RPS ones in there for the double button. These are a bit shorter, if you notice. RPS meant there's a bit shorter. Um, there's a few in there, look. and then I keep a couple of slightly thicker ones in case I run out of the 12s and put some thicker ones on. You probably need, but if you've run out of the 12s, you probably need some thicker ones to stop the flex. Um, keep one of those things in. Uh, and there might be a brush in this bag somewhere at the bottom, probably. I'll try and keep a brush, one of these brushes, these longer handle ones. I'll try and keep one of them in the bags because they're uh, handy to have. Well, there's the other brush I've not put away. Hang that up. Okay, so 12 mil rods and 15s there, I think they are. Some 12 mil different manufactured ones, one of them in a bag. This bag I use for open fires, this is my lead rod, 12 mil flexible RPS and then there's some rod station ones here, thicker ones and then a couple of even thicker RPS ones. You're going to need sort of tech, the, the 10 or 11 of the ones you expect to use the most, so there should be sort of 10 of these somewhere. And then one of these, that's at 11, usually suits most chimneys. There's another one of them in there. There also might be a brush in there somewhere. Same, buy 10 or 11 of these. And then if you do run out, you can switch to the couple of ones. And then I've got a set of 10 mils from Rod Station. And there's 10 there. I've got two sets in there, I think. Two, there's quite a few in there. Yeah. And I use those on those stoves with poor access, um, or tight bends, 
with liners just to work up with brick chimney, they're too flexible. Yeah, so that's what I use mostly. And in the van, I've got another bag of rods which has just got lots of um, the odd spare, one of these, one of these, you know, stuff like, you know. I, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know why it's in the van, but I keep it just in case I break one or the chimney's extra tall and I need some thicker, stiffer rods to get that last bit. So anyway, that's pretty much it for the back of the van. I need to hang that, not there, hang there, that's where it lives. Back of the van. Oh yeah, and I keep a spare brush for the uh, mini, mini Viper. Let's keep that down there. Yeah. So, any questions, you know, please feel free to make them in the comments. Um, yeah, and I will uh, see you in the next one. Have yourself a great day. Bye now.